Hi Gemini, welcome to your January 2018 love reading. It's Raina here. So I'm just shuffling the cards. Okay. Okay, I think I had another sign that had a lot of, I mean, that had all minor arcana cards too. So it can be a month in January, perhaps, for some of you that is more business as usual, whatever that means for you. Um, even if it's a good thing, it's not, you know, I'm not saying that business as usual is bad at all. But it's very interesting because we have here for the overall theme or heart of the matter, the Eight of Cups, which is about leaving what no longer serves you and um, going towards something that has more meaning for you. So I've even had this card uh, described as a spiritual quest too. So it's not just leaving a relationship, but also in the grand scheme of things in your life, Gemini, that you may feel like there, there are things that are just not doing it anymore for you, that maybe before you were, you know, easily amused, and now you have undergone a profound shift. You did have a full moon at the beginning of December, and I'm recording this on the new moon, which is a couple weeks after that. Um, I'm recording this on December 18th, and you had that full moon on December 3rd, and to me, this kind of uh, has that vibe to it. There's even a moon in the picture. And, um, you know, full moons are all about endings, and it being in your sign um, could have kind of highlighted something in your life that needed to become more... Um, it may be some kind of a profound thing that you have been trying to um, make happen for you. And if, you, if it is a relationship, and it could be, because it's cups, you're, it's like walking away from this emotional situation. Now, let me just keep going. But what, as I uh, stated, with all of these um, minor arcana cards, it could simply be that this is something that has already come to pass before the year begins. And it's kind of like in January, you're regrouping perhaps. In the past position, we have the Eight of Wands, which is a very exuberant kind of a card. Things, uh, messages coming in right away, uh, decisions needing to be made, or perhaps this urging to take action after a period of inactivity. What I think of that, I think of the Mercury retrograde, which may affect um, Virgos and Geminis more than others since you're ruled by Mercury. I don't know. But Mercury went direct. I'm pretending that I'm recording this after December 22nd is when Mercury goes direct. And um, so, and even after that, it still takes time to get back to full speed. And the Eight of Wands is a card of full speed ahead. So it's almost like there's this lull in the action when things are happening. And also, of course, because of holidays. And there's a lot of um, distractions. So if there is some kind of um, a situation that you held off on, it's like now you feel this need to kind of make these changes. But... Again, you know, talking about the major, major versus minor arcana cards, it's almost as if you already were out of there emotionally, and it was just a matter of following through officially, physically. 
And then we have here, as the present energy, the Page of Pentacles. Again, messages, sometimes of a practical nature, something that you can actually, uh, you know, documents or something along those lines that you have to sign. So, you know, of course, I would think of legal documents if you're getting divorced, for instance. Um, we can also look at this in terms of meeting if you met somebody who was a fire sign and you, you know, hit it off with this person right away. Fire signs are Aries, Sag, which is your opposite sign, and Leo. And um, that can be something that really gets you going and it makes you realize by meeting this person what you were missing. And so you walked away from another relationship that probably was over a long time ago, but you needed that contrast to be able to do it. And um, so I'm, you know, I, I, as I'm saying this, I was thinking about how I always end up talking about um, current relationships. And, um, I, you know, I just, I, I can't help it. I did an experiment. I did, I did single reading uh, and I did them with, uh, with like uh, relationship readings in the same month put it on YouTube, and I, it seemed redundant. And then now when I do it like this, it seems like uh, it, it seems like I just gravitate towards relationships. I, By the way, I haven't, I haven't recorded this, but I am going to have a, a special uh, Gemini reading for singles on Vimeo um, called New Year, New Love, but uh, I haven't gotten, I've only done like half of them. So, but the thing is that even if you are single, Perhaps you can see something in these cards that relates to how you've been feeling. Maybe you've just been feeling like um, you, you're you having a total change of um, what your desires are in, in a partner and you don't, you don't want to settle for less. Uh, the Eight of Cups to me is like having this sense of life being profound and not this shallowness. And, uh, of course, that can extend to relationships where we are no longer, as I said earlier, easily amused. And we're looking for that soulmate, that person that we can, we can like commune with on the deepest level, not just on the shallow level. Uh, the higher message is the Knight of Swords. Now, this could be you. And this is the spiritual message. Now, what is the Knight of Swords all about? I know that court cards are supposed to be actual people, supposedly. But in a general reading like this, we can look at them also as states of consciousness. And what I think of when I think of a knight of swords person, I think of somebody who's kind of prickly, who kind of uses their words like a sword to kind of keep people at bay. So sarcasm, um, which I think Gemini can do very in their sleep is like having that sense of, um, you know, don't get too close to me. Don't, uh, you know, don't, don't come any further. I, you know, it, it's like having this verbal fortress. And um, this, this knight is also very blunt. They're to the point, which can be good. But sometimes there is an insensitivity. There is a um, kind of a, a, you know, I think of knights sometimes as being rash. And so this is with communication. Think, uh, uh, speaking before thinking. And it's all because the, the person, there's some kind of frenzy around the person. They're not, um, they're not like centered sometimes. And this is true of Gemini. Gemini is all, always thinking, always, um, 
ruminating in their mind the things that they've done or thinking of new things and thinking too much sometimes. Now, yes, I am broad brushing. Some, some people, especially if they have learned how to train their mind through meditation, can really counteract that tendency. And if you have other, you know, if you have a moon in Scorpio, you may be able to tune in very deeply. And, and there's other, other factors to your horoscope. It's not just the sun sign, obviously. But the reason I, I, I talk about this is that the Knight of Swords is in the spiritual uh, placement. So basically, it's looking at yourself through the lens of what you can do to improve your situation in the future. And it might be that you have to watch how you communicate. And perhaps you give you send out the wrong message. Maybe you um, are to, in some cases, it could be that you tell people your life story when you first meet them. And you are too much of an open book. And so your speech is undisciplined, okay? For other people, it could be that your speech is too barbed, it's too prickly, and that as a result, you can alienate people. And you may not want to, but it is what it is, you know, the end result is the end result. So it's very interesting for sure. Um, if this is another person, um, this could be a lawyer. Uh, the Knight of Swords represents a lawyer. And so as a spiritual message, it could be saying that consulting a lawyer is the right thing for you to do. Uh, in other words, getting a divorce. You may be walking away from something and yet still feeling pangs of guilt, pangs of regret. And what I always say about the Eight of Cups is that it's, impo it's important, and I think it's important in life not to walk away from things, but to be walking towards something. So it's not enough to abandon something or abandon someone, but you have to have this vision of what it is that you want that is not provided by that person, place, or thing in order for it to be fully successful. Well, I mean, in of course, this is just a generalized thing. Obviously, if somebody's abusive, you, you don't have to wait for to find out what it is that you want out of life. But I'm talking about in general, if you feel dissatisfied with somebody, it's all too easy for a Gemini person to walk away. I just think Gemini, because you're an air sign, you're very detached, typically, and it could be easy for you to leave. And... Um, and just say, it's not working for me, uh, next. And yet, sometimes it could be inside of you. You know, it's, it might not be that other person. Um, the other person may be perfectly fine, but you're un restless or unhappy. And so the, the unconscious projection is like, you're supposed to make me happy. But because the higher message involves the Knight of Swords, it could be that in this particular case, it is warranted that you legally dissolve your union. Obviously, it depends on the individual uh, situation, since this is a general reading. Um, what crosses you is the Four of Swords, and this is a card of rest, re rejuvenation, and kind of like retreat but it's in the challenge position. So it could be that you're not doing that and you're jumping right into something. If there's somebody who is a page of pentacles, an earth sign, for instance, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, or somebody who is very earthy, or if it's just somebody that you've started a new job and you've fallen in love there, maybe with a fire sign, it could be a situation where you're going from one relationship to the other without even taking a little time for yourself. You know, that's what the four, four of Swords is about. And it's, it's interesting to me that people do that, that they are married for 20 years and then they go and they go right into a new relationship. I just don't think that that's wise because even if you're sure of the fact that you don't want to be with your current partner and you want to, and you're pretty sure that you want to be with this other person, 
I still think that, you know, you need to kind of deprogram yourself or, um, you know, just um, reflect on the marriage, the, the long-term relationship, uh, even if it's a short-term relationship. Reflect on that, process it, and things like that instead of just, okay, you know, that's to me living on the surface. So uh, watch out for that. It could also be, it's interesting, this is, uh, swords as well. So maybe there's an air sign person who's problematic. Maybe this person with the spiritual message is showing this destructive person. And may, maybe they're either an air sign, uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or they have it prominent in their makeup where they're very... Um, uh, they're very cerebral, but they're also kind of cold and that person is um not good for you for whatever reason if that's the same person that you're leaving um advice so what's coming in nine of pentacles um when i see this card i always again um maybe this is a virgo person with the, maybe that is the page of pentacles person saying that you're going to be with this person um or earth sign, other earth signs. Um, also, letting you know that you have the financial resources to be able to be on your own instead of um, feeling that sense of dependency. So if that was something that concerned you, that's really not the case. And you're able to uh, do your own thing and um, be able to flourish. Nine of Pentacles is a card of material prosperity. But there's a, the number nine, you know, kind of connects with that solitary. Uh, like the nine in the major arcana, the, the hermit. That numerology that deals with... Um, some it's like self mastery in a sense and that feeling of like you being able to tend to your own uh situation you don't need another person to hold your hand so to speak you know and that that's a card of you know independence and uh of all kinds but even materially speaking and uh the outcome is the Knight of Wands. So you may feel, again, this could be like a Sagittarius person uh, represented by the Eight of Wands. This, this could be the person that um, you have been, you know, de dealing with recently that you end up with. Now this person, uh, there, this card represents a person who may not be uh, ready to settle down. They may be sowing their oats. So this could definitely be a, a facet of you as well. But there's like a, a sense of freedom with this card. A sense of just out having a good time. And having like a feelings of like passion. Uh, maybe coming back into your life after uh, a long stretch of not having it. So it can point to the fact that you, you're feeling much more adventurous and um, energetic. And that could bode well for anything related to you just um, being happy, feeling like a sense of release. So, um, yeah, that's what I have for you, Gemini. I hope you enjoyed this. I got through it without coughing. I've been kind of I uh, have a little uh, thing I'm fighting off here, but um, anyway, uh, if you'd like a private reading, you can click on the link below, but otherwise, have a great January. Take care. Bye.